Some say Chinese is one of the most difficult languages in the world, and learning it is almost impossible. So learning Chinese, the most difficult thing. Very, 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 So I'm sort of tone deaf. I can't really hear them. I think the cultural mindset is the biggest complication for the us. grammar. It's just complicated so much. Only because you're not learning it in the right way. Why not try Take Away Chinese, where you can take some Chinese away and experience progress day by day. Take away Chinese. We will promise you a difference. Welcome to Takeaway Chinese. I'm Niu Honglin, and joining me today, Steve Hatherly. Hello, Steve. How's it going? Great to have you on the show, as always. And we've been doing the show for two weeks, two episodes. And I was wondering, you've been here for a while, and you've been learning Chinese. Only starting, of course, but currently, or for now, do you have any questions that's troubling you as a first time here in China, first time starting to learn the language kind of perspective? I do. I'm an English speaker, which means I use the alphabet. This is my challenge. When I put things into the phone to translate for me in any particular situation, it will show the translation in Chinese and it'll show the Chinese characters. Now, I can't read the Chinese characters, but underneath the Chinese characters, there are what looks to me like English letters, like ah. alphabet letters. Now, here's the challenge. When I try to read out that translation, because of course I can just hit the microphone button and the phone will say it in Chinese for me, but I don't want to do that. I'm a student of Chinese, so I want to try. Even though I know I'm going to fail, I still want to try. But when I try to read out those English alphabet letters, it's totally off. I tried so many times to just read out in English what I saw, and the people can't understand anything of what I said. So my question is, are those English alphabet letters and... Do they sound the same in Chinese <laughs> as they would in English if I'm reading it out in English? I think I already know the answer is no, <laughs> they don't sound the same. So that's my challenge and that's my question today. That is a very valid question. And actually, they are not English letters. Mm. They are what we call pin yin. So pin carries the meaning of put together and yin carries the meaning of sound. So they are little letters or little signs or signals with their own yin, with their own sounds. And if you pin them together, put them together like Legos, then you can have a way to know how to pronounce each and every Chinese character. Mm. So pinyin system is essential for Chinese learning, not only for non-Chinese native speakers, actually for us, when I was a little girl, when I was in school, when I first started taking my Chinese lesson, it's the speaking and writing lesson in Chinese, I would have to start from pinyin. I need to know how to pronounce each and every one of the pinyin letter, and I need to know how to put them together so that in the future, when I start learning the Chinese characters, I would be able to look up the characters that I do not know in the dictionary to actually pin those in together, to put those sounds together to figure out how to pronounce the new characters that I'm learning. This is exactly the information that I was looking for as a new Chinese student, because with other languages, and I'll use Korean as an example again. I know I've talked about it before, but that's the other language that I speak pretty well. I remember learning in the beginning, and the Korean alphabet has sounds that are very much relatable to English. And you can learn to read those characters within a couple of hours. So for independent self-study, it's quite easy to read Korean characters by looking things up in the dictionary and then reading them yourself. and then find, But you can learn how to pronounce it easily just by learning the pronunciation of the Korean characters. If we learn the pinyin, then independent study is possible. Yes. And that's what I was trying to say before. I felt so lost because I thought, 
oh my gosh, if I don't have somebody to show me exactly how to save things, this, what I thought was English underneath the translation is useless to me. <laughs> but that's because it's pinyin. It's not English. It just looks like it. But those are the keys to unlock the pronunciation of different words. Exactly. Mm. And that is why for today's episode, we're going to give you some more information about the pinyin, about the structure of it, about how it'll help you to better understand or better find a way to learn the Chinese language. And for our dear listeners, if you're interested in Chinese culture and you want to get a grip on the Chinese language, then this is the show for you. Stick with us for 30 minutes and you soon see the rewards. And for more fun Chinese learning, follow our Facebook page, Learn Chinese Chinese to watch many fun videos and live streams. But now, let's provide you with some free Chinese for takeaway. In today's case, I think what you're going to take away freely <laughs> would be pinyin instead of precisely Chinese. Mm. So basically, pinyin uses the Latin alphabet, um, the same one we use in English, to write Chinese words so you can learn their pronunciations, their phonetics, without needing to learn their characters, the Hanzi, the Chinese characters mm. that we will introduce in the future because they are also very vital in Chinese learning. As we know that thanks to its unique sound system, Chinese is filled with similar sounding words. This makes it quite difficult for non-native speakers to differentiate between words and sound combinations. That is why actually learning pinyin would help you to pronounce uh, each and every character. Yet, if you really need to learn the Chinese language, still knowing characters can be very, very essential since we know many characters would share the same pronunciation. And in a lot of occasions, even words would share similar pronunciation. Pronunciations. Mm. And when it comes to pinyin, we know both traditional Chinese and simplified Chinese can be represented using the same pinyin because they're essentially the same character. But we'll get into that a bit later in the character chapter. And uh, pinyin is relatively simple to learn because it only involves three parts. The first part is the initials. They are consonants and represent sounds that appear at the beginning of a syllable. Let's use the character Zhong, for example. We know Zhongguo, that's China. Zhongwen, that's the Chinese language. So Zhong, Zhong itself, the initial for the Zhong is Zhi. Mm. So Zhi is the starting of the pronunciation of Zhong. And that's the consonant sound. That's the consonant sound. Mm -hmm. And that is spelled in English Z-H. Okay. Which is a bit weird to be pronounced as Zhi. For English speakers. It's not that it's weird. It's just unexpected. <laughs> because as a native English speaker, when you look at what we assume are English alphabet letters, your brain automatically goes to that English sound. So all we have to do is just learn the sound difference. So I don't think it's weird. It's just something new. That's all. You just have to know. You have to know. You have to remember it. Yeah. And we know in English, actually... Let's put it this way. In French, actually, if you see the French words, if you see the French words spelled in French letters, you'll be able to pronounce French because mm -hmm. there's the rules to do that. Yeah, and you see the different um, little symbols above the letters sometimes, like accent grave, for example, or accent aigu. Then you'll know that because you see that, then you're changing the pronunciation of the letter that's beneath it. I think we're talking about the same kind of thing here. Yes. Right? Uh, so when we see Z-H or Z-H, then we know that it represents the sound for Z. 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 Uh -huh. And the Z is the initial mm -hmm. of the pinyin. We call it mu, but it's fine. And then there's the mu part. That's the finals. The finals are sounds that appear at the end of a syllable. These can be individual vowels, a combination of vowels, or a combination of vowels and consonants. Mm. For the zhong example, O is actually a vowel, whereas N, G are, we know, consonants. Mm. Yet when put together, it's pronounced ong. 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 So, zhi, ong, zhong. Mm -hmm. Zhi, ong, zhong. Zhi, ong, zhong. Yes, and that's the zhongguo, zhongwen, zhong pronunciation of that specific character. Uh -huh. And it's not 
entirely it because we know there are the five tones. tones. So yes. when you learn the sound of the, for example, if I were to learn this in English, the consonants or the vowels, then you learn how they go together to create a sound. But then you have to know which tone to put with that. Yes. So it's like layers of a cake. Right. Oh, yeah. You get the the cake part, and then you get the frosting part on top. So the frosting is maybe the tone part that comes、yes. at the end. <laughs> and let me share a little bit about the frosting part. The tone <laughs> marks show you how to pronounce each syllable. There are four tones. We talked about it. A flat one. That's the first tone. A rising tone. That is the second one. A dipping tone and a falling tone. Plus a natural fifth tone. The natural one would be the light tone. So that's the tone, and、uh, I'm not really sure if you've already noticed the tone mark while you were being a bit confused with the pronunciation of you thought was English alphabet, English letters, but actually they were pinyin in the dictionary、so、that you were looking into. When you're looking at the pinyin, then you'll see the different kind of symbols with the letters. Yes, those symbols. Are the tone marks? Yes,、uh-huh. and they are actually easy to remember. At least the tone part is very easy to remember because if you see a very flat one, that one is the first tone because you do not really change. Remember, it was five five. So zhong,、mm-hmm. that's the first tone,、mm-hmm. and the second tone goes from down to up, suggesting it's a rising tone. Okay. The third tone goes down, down up. and up.、Yep. That's the third tone, and the fourth tone go down. Okay. So, with that, I think at least now, if you look up any character in the dictionary, you would understand what the letter above it or beneath it is.、Mm-hmm. Because you've got the sound when you learn the pinyin sounds, and then you see the tone indicators, then you put those together, and then you know how to pronounce the word properly. And learning the pinyin would be essential for anyone to start learning Chinese. Yes, so this would be the advice that I would give myself, and to anyone else who is starting Chinese from the very first time or from the very first day, memorize these, memorize these, drill these into your brain, because then once you've got the tones and once you re- memorize all the pinyin, then that independent study. Is possible. Then, if you are lucky enough to be in China and you are traveling around and you do want to use your phone and you want to say things by yourself, then you can read the pinyin, you can see the tone marks, and then you can talk to people because you'll know how to pronounce the words. You can still use your translator in your phone, which is an incredible tool, but. You can use your own AI, if you will, your own your own brain. <laughs> yes, your N N what N I natural intelligence、um, <laughs> to assist yourself as well. Yes,、mm. and、uh, of course that would be very helpful and very. Efficient, I would say, it's an efficient way to learn a new language. Yeah. Yet, I still recommend you to learn several phrase or sentences that will give you the sense of accomplishment to make you feel like, "Ha,、huh, I am really learning in a real life situation." Oh, no doubt about it. Yeah, but when you learn the pinyin and you learn the tone indicators. Then going to your other chapter, if you will, where you're memorizing sentences or you're memorizing expressions or little phrases, then that's going to be a whole lot easier to remember. Because even the things that you've taught me so far, which thank you for doing so, by the way, I think you taught me、uh, "I'm sorry," which is "tui bu qi,"、mm, right? Tui bu qi, right? Or "I'm sorry, I don't speak Chinese." Tui bu qi, ting bu dong.、Uh-huh. Um, But that's really difficult to remember because I don't have any pinion knowledge and I don't have any tone indicator knowledge. So after I write that sentence down the first time in English for me in English, if I look at it the following day or the next day, I've forgotten the tones. I don't know how to say the sentence properly anymore. But with the pinion or with the tone indicators, then you can put those in when you're making your own notes. Then you can put those tone indicators in yourself. Yes. So with Pinyin, I'm pretty sure your learning Chinese process can take off from now. But I still want to share several expressions or sentences with you in today's episode, and、uh, I think that is quite an essential one, especially if you're here in China and if you are trying to use your language to assist your staying. That is, where is certain place?、Mm-hmm. 
Yes. Where is the bathroom? Where <laughs> yeah. is the subway station? Where is the shopping mall? If you happen to be looking for a shopping mall and you're walking around. Yeah. Where is is essential, I think. It is. And in Chinese, it is pronounced 在哪里? 在哪里? Yes. So here, 在 means at and 哪里 basically is where. So, 哪里, where, and where is the place? It's at where. And that is why instead, we've already talked a little bit about in Chinese, when you're asking a question, you do not really need to reverse the order mm -hmm. of the verb and the noun. Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing in this kind of question. That is, for example, if we're talking about bathroom, which can be 卫生间, 卫生间 Yes, so 卫生 is hygiene mm -hmm. and 间 is a room mm. So 卫生间 would be the hygiene room It's the bathroom It's the place that you can wash your hands mm -hmm. uh -huh. So 卫生间 卫生间 uh -huh, That's the bathroom 在哪里? At where? So where is the bathroom? So 卫生间 comes in the beginning mm -hmm. and 在哪里 comes at the end So uh -huh. And since we've already introduced the idea of pinyin, I'd like to correct your pronunciation a little bit because Please this do. is a really good example. We've talked about Zhongguo. So Zhongguo, the initial of the Zhong mm. pronunciation is zhi, mm. zhi ong zhong. And here, zai, the initial of the zai pronunciation is actually zi. So zi and zhi are different, yes. which is why it's zai. Instead of zai. Okay. Zai. Zai, perfect. Zai. Uh -huh. That's the little nuance when it comes to pronunciations. In Chinese, we have zhi, zhi, shi, zi, zi, si. Mm. Um, it's z, h, c, h, and uh, s, h mm -hmm. versus z, c, and s. Mm. Of course, I'm pronouncing it with English letter pronunciation. They have their own names. I'm just, for the sake of the English speakers, it's easier for you to know which letter, which pinyin letter we're talking about here. Sure. But uh, the thing is, knowing the distinction between these initials and finals would help you to understand better the distinction between different pronunciations, such as zai or chai. 卫生间在哪里? Where is the bathroom? 卫生间 在哪里? Perfect, you're mm. correcting so yourself. It's not jai, like a J sound in English. It's more like a Z sound, I think. But yes. it's almost like Z with a mini H. Mini, ah, interesting way of understanding it. 在, 在哪里? Yes, mm -hmm. 在哪里? Mm -hmm. And I think it's relatively easy, again, because in Chinese, even if it's a question, you do not have to reverse the order. And the, the difference between a yes or no question and an open question is that you always have a ma at the end of an yes or no question. Right. But you suggest the question or the meaning of the question, you deliver the meaning of the question by changing the words in the sentence instead of putting any signal kind of word at the end of the sentence. So mm. here, na, we talk about na li being where already. So, 卫生间, bathroom, 在, at, na li, where, it's already a question. Mm -hmm. Ah, okay, okay, I understand. So there's no need to put ma. At there. the end. Can, because can you? No, you can't. Oh, interesting. Because ma suggests it's a yes or no question. Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing. For example, 你的名字是什么? 你的名字, your name. Yep. 是, is, mm -hmm. 什么, what? What is your name? You have the what in the sentence, so you do not need to make the sentence a question sentence by doing anything else. Yes, I understand. So, for example, if I were to ask you, how old are you? The answer would not be yes or no. So therefore, you will not hear ma in the question mm -hmm. because there's no yes or no answer. Exactly. Okay, that's a good learning point. So when you hear ma, the possible answers are yes, yes or no. Mm -mm, or no. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> exactly. Got it. Yes. So that is the first way of asking where is this place. And a second way I'd like to introduce is really close to the first way. That is... 在哪儿? Instead of saying 在哪里, you can say 在哪儿? 
Zeit nar. Perfect. I think you are a natural when it comes to the R sound. Zeit nar. Uh huh. The reason I am introducing the R sound in Chinese, we call it R 话音 So R is the R sound, and 话 means to make it this way. So make it R. And yin is the sound, the pronunciation. We've talked about pin yin. Yin is the sound, and our hua yin is really common here in Beijing, in the northern part of the country. 卫生间在哪儿？卫生间在哪儿 ？Perfect. Uh huh. And I need to tell you this because currently you're in Beijing, you will hear a lot of our sound. I have, <laughs> I have, and I actually was really curious about that because when you don't. Speak Speak the language, but yet you're still hearing it, and I hear that r r r a lot. <laughs> so I know it. I knew it was important to. You know how people talk in Beijing, but I didn't know why. <laughs> the thing is, our hua yin itself actually is a. Official and important part of the Chinese pronunciation. If you look into the dictionary, if you start in primary school learning Chinese here in the country, you will hear or you will notice that in certain words in the dictionary, the R is included. You have to pronounce it as a R Hua Yin kind of way.、Mm. Yet the R sound is particularly significant when you are talking to someone from Beijing or even from the just the northern in general, the northern part of the country.、Mm. Whereas it's much less common to hear someone pronouncing the R Hua Yin in the southern part of the country. If I go to the southern part of the country and I say "wei sheng jian zai na," they will definitely understand you. Okay, no problem. But it's just not the way that they talk. So, what do they do? Just drop the R altogether? They would most often use "zai na li" much often、uh, than "zai na." I see. Okay. Uh huh. And we know that Chinese is really hundreds of dialects and languages. By saying languages, I'm exaggerating a little bit. The idea is that sometimes people outside of the country would take Chinese to be synonymous with Mandarin, but Mandarin is actually Putonghua, a universal language that is spoken here in China, and Putonghua is what we're teaching here. And if you learn that, people in China would definitely understand you, but you would still notice people speaking with different dialects、mm. and different accents and. The R Hua Yin, the full of R Hua Yin Beijing accent, and if you walk in the northern part of the country, you will hear R Hua Yin more often. I see. Okay, so there's two ways to say where is the one is Zai Na Li,、mm -hmm. and the other is Zai Nar. Zai Nar. Okay, so our example was where is in English where is the bathroom. Bathroom is Wei Sheng Jian. So put it together. Wei Sheng Jian Zai Na Li. Or if you're in the Beijing area, you can make it even easier. Wei Sheng Jian Zai Na. Wei Sheng Jian Zai Na. Perfect. Zai Na.、Mm. And since we talked about two ways of saying where, we can also have two ways of saying bathroom. Oh. Even three. Actually, the second one I'd like to introduce would be 洗手间洗手间 Perfect. 洗 means to wash. Show is your hand,、mm. and Jian. We've already talked about it's the room character. So, 洗手间 hands washing room, bathroom. 洗洗洗 is the one we're learning. 洗手间 Uh huh. 洗手间 That one's tough. <laughs> it's a little. Yes,、yeah. it is. I think a lot of English speaker would pronounce it as she.、Mm. Yeah, exactly. Which、mm -hmm. is what I was saying. But I learned through takeaway Chinese before. That if my pronunciation is a little bit off, people will still understand. People、you. will still understand. So I can say, "She showed Jin Jai Nali." People will understand. And、you. people will direct me to the bathroom. Exactly. And if it even that is a bit too complicated, if you just say W C, people understand you. Ah,、uh, water closet. Ah,、uh, water closet. <laughs> and for most Chinese, if you say W C. They would direct you to the closest one. Oh, so if you're really, really stuck,、uh -huh. then you can just say WC. Yes, and people will know <laughs> exactly. And then have a little panic look on your face. Ah,、uh -huh. that is the safety net <laughs> and, I'd like to provide、yeah. for today's episode. What WC Jainar? Ah,、uh、ha! -huh. That's、uh. even better. But I think if you remember Jainar, hopefully you can remember 洗手间 or 卫生间 as yeah, well.、Right. 
And if you don't mind, can I ask just one more question in of this course. in this lesson? I found a lot of times I wanted to say excuse me. Ah. Because I am about to bump into someone or I'm getting off an elevator or I want to get around someone in a shopping mall and I want to at, say like, oh, sorry, excuse me, please move out of the way uh, or something, very useful some, one. something like that, right? Um, so can you teach me how to say that, please? Do you still remember how to say I'm sorry? Dwebuchi. You can use that. Ah, okay. Uh -huh. So, right. Makes sense. Um, you're implying the same thing. You're implying the same thing. Mm -hmm. Yet, this one is a bit too strong when it comes to I'm sorry. Mm. It's like you've done something wrong and you're saying I'm sorry. You're apologizing. Remember, I am not equal with you. Yes. We do not match in mm -hmm. certain sense. It's my fault. It's my fault. Mm -hmm. You don't really have to be that polite if you're only asking them to give you the way. Yeah, you so didn't do anything wrong. You didn't do anything wrong. Uh -huh. So, in this case, you want to say excuse me and the exact Translation of excuse me in Chinese would be 不好意思. 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 I have to warn you because 意思 is a very hard to translate kind of Chinese in the Chinese language. It carries so many meanings. Mm. And we already know 不 means no. Yeah. 好 is kind of like good, kind of like okay. Mm -hmm. So not okay. And 不好意思, you can in this stage of learning, understand it just as excuse me. It's like you're making me blush a little bit or the situation is making me blushing a little bit because mm. for the situation, I'm a little bit embarrassed. Mm -hmm. It's like I'm not doing anything wrong. I'm just, for example, need a little bit of your favor to move aside a little bit. Mm -hmm. It's still making me a bit sorry, but not that sorry. That is why we're using excuse me instead of I'm sorry. We're using 不好意思 instead of 对不起. 不好意思. Perfect. Okay. So I'm walking down the street and I'm looking at my phone, for example. Everybody does that these days, yeah. right? And then I bump into somebody. Now, in this case, I'm not asking them to move. So it's not a very deep apology. It's just kind of like a, my bad. Which one do I use in that kind of situation? Do I say, tuebuchi? Or do I say, 不好意思? Actually, you can use both. Mm -hmm. But if it were me, I would use 不好意思. Okay. So 不好意思, it's like a lighter sorry. I got it. So if you're really apologizing, then 对不起 is appropriate. But if it's just, you're just saying like a very light, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry about that, then 不好意思 is good enough. And remember, you can use it twice. Like, 不好意思, 不好意思. Uh, like ah, okay, sorry, okay. sorry. Uh, okay, good, 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 good. 不好意思, 不好意思. Oh, see, it's difficult when you try <laughs> to put them all together because there's four different things to uh, four different things to say. You know, it's really funny being an English speaker and learning Chinese because in the beginning, I want to learn the ones that are the shortest. So, 对不起 is three different things to say, whereas 不好意思 is four different things to say. But now that I know that you can use these in different situations. It's like learning two different things to say for two different contexts. So this is good to learn as well. Yes, hmm. so 不好意思 and 对不起, use them for different situations. 不好意思, got it. So next time I'm getting off an elevator and somebody's in the way, then I can say uh, 不好意思. Yes, I like that. That's perfect. Can you do the tone for me one time before we finish? 不好意思. 不好意思. Perfect. Please excuse me. Oh, what a great lesson today. <laughs> and that brings us to the end of today's Takeaway Chinese. For those of you who are interested in learning more, actually, you can find more episodes of the show at radio.cgtn.com and go to the column podcast. You can also listen to the show and read the script there. Find us wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. Just search for Takeaway Chinese. Don't forget to leave your questions, comments, and ratings. 感谢收听，我们下次再见。Thank you.